Good afternoon, everyone. God bless you for being with us here today in this uh, message as we're going through the uh, book of Revelation, first three chapters, and we're in the second chapter. Uh, we've went through uh, Ephesus and and Smyrna, the two churches, were into the letters that God, through Jesus Christ, designated, or yes, designated to the to these uh, seven churches, churches being designated by the Lord. That is, and <clears throat> so. Today, we're covering a subject that nobody wants to hear. And that seems to be the messages that God gives me, messages that people don't want to hear. But when I look at the Word of God, I see that he did this, that same thing to the old prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and uh, all, all of, in fact, all of the prophets. He said, I'm sending you to a stiff-necked people. Well, I don't, I don't see you that are with me today as stiff-necked. I see you as yielded to the Holy Spirit and you wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't take the time to log in and be with us. So I appreciate you very much. Uh, but the I must preach it the way that the Lord gives it. And I'm sure that the message is for not only you, but for me and for the entire church that we are to preach these messages like this to give people the fortification, the knowledge and the understanding to know that we're in a spiritual battle. When we accept Jesus Christ, we're in a spiritual battle. He's called us into his kingdom, and his kingdom is not of this world. And we are not physically in that kingdom, as he called us in, but as spiritually, we are recognized in the kingdom of God. And as we walk, as the scripture teach, will teach today, with him, we will be privileged to actually live in the kingdom as Christ sets it up when he returns to earth at the end of the tribulation period, praise God. It's a tremendous hope and a tremendous uh, wonderful thing to know and to understand this whole thing. You know, God is, the, is revealing his son all the way through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And he's doing the same thing in each one of these messages that we bring. And God is revealing his son. And I think you will see that today as we uh, look at the messages that he is giving to the churches. That it's, he's actually, Father is revealing his son as the author and finisher of our faith, as the answer for every situation, as the need to be able to live with him forever in glory. There's no man comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. He is, he is the uh, the truth, the life, and the way. There's no other way but to enter the kingdom or to to live forever with God, other than through Jesus Christ. And He has revealed that all the way through scriptures. And so the message of the day is to show us how we must conduct ourselves in times when we're 
let him buy false teachers even amongst us. And that's the title of the message. There shall be false teachers among you, amongst you. So we're looking at the next two churches, which is Pergamos and Theratira, because I, I put them together, hoping that we can cover the entire subject today, simply because all they are listed differently, they involve the false teachers, the false prophets, the false doctrines, uh, the allowing of these things to happen in their churches, and these are the things that the Lord is pointing out that these things must be corrected. And he's going to show us through his word what's going to happen if we do not. Not only what if we will, but if we do not. And it's all true as the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus Christ in his word. So thank you for being with us and let's get right into it today. In the chart here at the beginning uh, of the letters uh, to the churches, uh, at the heading, I've listed the things that the Lord listed that were a problem to him. As he states it, I have a few things against you. And then he and then he delineates them to the these two churches. And so I put them in this, those things that he has against the church here in this uh subheading so that we can look at it immediately. Under Pergamus, he said they're holding. Holding. Remember that thought. They're holding to the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. And we can read all about that in Numbers 22. I've listed it right here in the notes, starting from verse 1 of 22 and reading on through to the first verse of chapter 25. And for the sake of time to summarize this, uh, because I have so many scriptures to go through, uh, I listed it here so that you can read it and study it. And uh, But I'm going to just paraphrase it and give it to you. Balaam was a prophet. You remember, he's the one that the donkey spoke to. And he was a prophet, and Balaam was a king of uh, a... Uh, 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 king of uh, Ammon. And uh, what happened is the Israelites were over there in the Jordan Valley. You can imagine just on the border of Israel era on the side of on the uh, on the west side of the Jordan River and uh, there's Oh, at least two million, probably a lot more, Israelites camped out there in this valley. And uh, Bela is, is the neighboring king there, but he remembers that they didn't, in, in Moab, excuse me, he's a, he's a king of Moab, and he remembers that the Moab really didn't treat the Israelites very well as they were coming out of Egypt and going through their land over to settle into the land of Israel. And he saw this enormous number of people over there and it scares him. 
And so he he gets a hold of Balaam, who is a prophet, and wants to pay Balaam to curse the Israelites so that he can take advantage of them and destroy them so that uh, they won't uh, destroy him and his nation. And they go through a series of this back and forth. Balaam is, is uh, actually uh, getting messages from God, but he is not He's not ministering properly, and he's only interested in gain, as this uh, Balak is giving him, as the Bible describes it as the, the rewards of divination. And uh, so not only does he do that, but he causes, uh, when Balak asks him to curse Israel, he says, well, I can only say what the Lord's going to give me. I can't say any more than that. And that he was correct. He did the right thing there. But then when Balak says, well, I want you to seek the Lord. So he does. He seeks the Lord to see if the Lord has another idea. And the Lord and gives him a word that is, says that, that blesses Israel rather than cursing it. But before they do that, Balaam has Balak set up seven augurs for each one of them, Balaam and Balak, with uh, seven uh, bulls and, and seven rams offered on them. So he's offering sacrifices right there uh, with this uh, wicked king, neighboring king. Anyway, you know the story that the Lord was displeased with Balaam because he went with Balak and he was riding his donkey and the Lord, the angel of the Lord, of course, being the Lord Jesus Christ, stood in the way with the sword in his hand. And the donkey saw the angel, uh, but Balaam didn't. And so the donkey turned aside and Balaam got angry with the donkey and, and whipped the donkey. And that went on back and forth until uh, the donkey uh, in his uh, fury there smashed the the foot of Balaam against the wall that was there, a rock or something. And so Balaam uh, struck the donkey really hard. And the donkey, the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and he spoke with a man's voice and he said, why did you hit me? And so you know that you know that uh, story. Uh, and then it came that the Balaam's eyes were opened and he saw the angel of the Lord and he was fearful. And, and so that's, that's what transpired in that initial incident. But he didn't stop there. He kept seeking the Lord for another day. And Balaam kept taking Balaam in different positions to view the children of Israel, thinking that if he could see them a little better, or if he couldn't see them all at once, he might curse some of them, etc. And Balaam kept seeking the Lord for that. Finally, what happens is that uh, Balaam can only speak blessings to the children of Israel rather than curses. And so they go their separate ways, but they led the people, the people of Moab, to this position where they could view or that they were offering their sacrifices and doing all their 
seances and and uh, party time to their gods here right in front of the children of Israel. Them being up on the on the mountain, but the Israelites down in the valley. And the Israelites see these people up there and see it's party time. And so it winds up in chapter 25. Uh, and I will read that. What's happened? So, and Israel abode in Tim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab, and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods, and Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. This was a result of false prophets, false ministries, uh, ministries that are hired out that sell their gifts for gain. And so this is the type of thing that we're looking at today that the Lord said was going, that was going on here in the church of Pergamos. It was spiritual fornication. That's what it was, spiritual fornication. Lured by the world, and they, they yielded to that. Disobedient, immoral, all kinds of evil practices right there in front of them, so they joined in. So here I'm going to play these first. Uh, Pergamus, Pergamus. And to the angel of the church in Pergamus write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thee I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden man, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it. Praise the Lord. Oh, the mercy of God. Let's look at what the Lord, how the Lord admonished these people. In verse 16, he says, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against thee with the sword of my mouth. We just read that, or just heard that being read to us. Think how serious that is. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Father revealing the Son right here. Here's the word coming out. Saying, repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. That is the word of God. Like the Lord said when he, when he was ministering on earth, he says, I don't judge you. I came to save the world, but there's one that will judge you at the end time, and that's the word that I speak. They will judge you, the words that I speak. Here's a very vivid example right here. And the, you can imagine if anybody really but it really believed in God's word right here, how serious that is. I wonder if anybody really, really realizes the seriousness 
of being in disfavor with God. Because of false doctrines, we, we're told that we can't lose our salvation. You don't want to hear that, I know. Well, I'm not saying you personally, those of you who are listening, I don't know. You haven't told me you didn't want to hear that. But this is a perfect example of why we must fight against these things that cause people to yield to, to evil temptations, worldly temptations, simply because they've been told a lie and not the truth. It's very, very serious. Very, very serious. And then, of course, the doctor of the Nicolaitans, and it said, which thing I hate. We don't have much knowledge about the Nicolaitans, except uh, what history may tell us about these things, but the, uh, the Nicolaitans, as I have read, uh, were people that followed a bishop named Nicholas, and uh, he he was he had some queer ideas, and I say that uh, sincerely because uh, it has told me that he believed that women should be common so that we could get rid of jealousy. So I don't know, he certainly didn't get that from the Word of God. He certainly didn't get that from the Holy Spirit. But the, these are people that are following doctrines like that. And of course, the last four words of that sentence, verse 15, chapter 2 says, the Lord says, which thing I hate. Not only does the Lord hate it, we must hate it. We must hate these kinds of things to the point where we stand against them. We must minister against them. We must try to poke people that are involved in this because they simply don't understand out of the fire. But the false teachers have to be done away with. They have to be uh, excluded from our fellowships. They, they must be challenged on this. We must stand against these things and these people with the word of God. And so this is the teaching today. And so I'm going to bring you 2 Peter, but not now. And uh, 2 Thessalonians and uh, wind up with Revelation 19, of course, when the Lord comes back. But I want to finish with hearing uh, what the Lord has against these people as we go ahead and minister the admonishments. So we go on to Theratira, and, it's, and it says, Thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Of course, we realize that, that idol worship is covetousness and that's, that's a work of the flesh and as a, People may not worship idols as they did in the old days, but in reality they do when they think they have things they can't do without that they've got to have rather than the commitment to follow the Lord 100%. So I'm going to carry on with uh, the and play the message to the church of theory. Before you do that, Dad, you need to change the. Huh? You got it coming out of this speaker. It needs to go to this. Change the speaker.
Yeah. Sorry, that's the one I was on and I didn't realize that. Let's see if this is right. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Praise the Lord. So we see, and we hear the word of God there that tells Thyatira uh, that they must repent or go into great tribulation. If they do not repent, that's said in verses 22 and 23 that we just heard. And so what we need to understand is God is so concerned about the people that are in these churches that are hearing these false doctrines and he recognizes those that are holding fast. And the admonition is to the faithful, hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Of course, that was the that was the letter that went to the church of Theatre, but it applies to all churches where people are sincere about the Lord, but they don't understand because they haven't been told, but they love the Lord and they're trying to follow the Lord. But there's all kinds of evil things going on, and but they they still stay in those churches and they still listen to these false prophets and the Lord gives the instruction right here. Hold fast till I come. But he also tells us that we must not listen to these false doctors, these false prophets, these false teachers. The amazing thing to me is the Lord it prophesies this right at the beginning. And Yet it shows that people don't get, don't even look at the word of God because the Lord told us before we even go in, like he told the children of Israel that before they went into the promised land. He was going to have to remove them twice. But all the way through, he kept encouraging them, telling them, if you, if you turn to me, if you follow me, if you hear my voice, you won't have to be removed from the land. It's the same type of thing today. If we would stand against these false teachings, but in order to stand against the false teachings, we have to know that they're false teachings. How do we know that they're false teachings? By studying the word of God for ourselves. Study to show ourselves approved of God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. It's amazing. I was uh, 
I was talking with Rod and he was telling me about David Barton and his museum down there in Texas and and uh, movies that he put out for for our learning and understanding and how the word of God, the Bible was given uh, by Congress to the churches in, in the uh, first implementation of our nation, uh, the, the Bible was given to teach the children to read. And these children learned to read. And three-year-olds were learning. Four, five, six-year-olds were excelling in reading the Old Testament of the Word of God. Because it's the Holy Spirit that teaches. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches. And if children know this is the word of God and God is speaking to them and the Lord will give them understanding that they can know what the scriptures are, they do know, they do learn, they do understand. And it's the same with the adults. We must have that confidence, that faith to believe that the Holy Spirit is not playing games with us in his word. His word is not something that we can't not, cannot be understood unless we have a theologian to teach us or have a, a, a commentary to refer to for reference. It's, it's, it's just disastrous today that these things are going on today. Why do we have people falling in line with this, this dastardly a push on abortion and a dastardly push on on socialism and going right into communism. Why do we have these things today? Because people in the church are not into the word of God. They're listening to messages. They're listening to the sermons where the ministers don't, listen, don't learn the word of God. Because they're not told that they can learn the word of they're not taught the word of God in their learning institutions. They're taught you can't understand it. They're taught that the that the original documents were lost. And there's no way that you can recover them. They're taught that the language that was used is so full of idioms that you don't you can't really understand what they're talking about. These are lies. He's alive. But the Holy Spirit spake, the men spake, the holy men of God spake as the Holy Ghost gave the utterance. We have the word of God, a more sure word of prophecy than even the experience of a vision of the Lord himself as Peter recognized in his experience and in his epistle. Praise the Lord. But let me get into the ministry. You can see here on the right that I've got all these scriptures here that you can look up. That they're, they're encouragements to Hold fast till he comes and and how to do that, like of course, admonishments like this one here. This is this is one you should know like the back of your hand. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin and to death or of obedience unto Unto righteousness. That couldn't be any plainer, but what it's saying is you it's a choice. And it's saying that you choose every day which one you're going to follow. And it's telling the result of who you follow. What happens to you? You're a slave to who you obey. But if you obey obedience, 
Obedience to whom? The Lord. Oh, through his word, he's speaking to us. Praise God. Obedience unto righteousness. The, the, the walk of the Christian is a disciplined walk. Not a free for all walk, and you don't, it doesn't matter how you live, like that false doctrine that teaches you can't damage your salvation. When it's, the Bible teaches differently, this one verse right here is a profound example. Uh, So you can look all of these up. I, I may, because I want to make a point. Here's Matthew 5, 20. I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of God. Who said that? Jesus said that. Do, you, do we believe it? I believe it. Except my righteousness is exceeding the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. The religious people that were in leadership in the day of Christ Jesus on earth Unless our righteousness exceeds their righteousness, we shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me see if there's some more. Well, let's skip this one. Let me let me get this. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Do we believe that? Say, yes, I believe that. Without holiness, I will not see the Lord. That's what it's saying. But look how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Not just a free for all, do whatever you want, and you're set for heaven. Look what it highlights, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Trouble who? It says you. If I let bitterness spring up in me, then I can be defiling people who listen to me. The scripture tells us that the minister must follow. Paul said uh, that when my obedience is fulfilled, then I am equipped to help somebody else. And it says, it says in my words that we are examples to people and to make sure. It says, let no let me let me do this. Let no man uh, despise you, which means. Make sure that you follow the word that you preach so that you won't be a hypocrite and defile others. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. This is what the word of God is saying. We're supposed to be looking for these things and and try with all of our heart through the word of God to correct these situations. For you know that how afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. Oh, praise God. That's how, that's how we're supposed to be uh, conducting ourselves, not just accepting God's Beautiful deliverance from sin and then walking our own way in defiance of his marvelous life, his resurrected life that he gives to us. 
Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth of the will of the Father which is in heaven. A disciplined life. What about this one? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, or effeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortionists, shall inherit the kingdom of God. This is the message that must be spoken. Not only to the church, but to these people that are that are uh, uh, being led into this feminism and and abusing themselves with mankind. But we have churches today that are welcoming these people into their fellowship without being delivered. They become false teachers and false examples where other people get influenced by them and they fall right in line with all these evils. The same with thieves and covetous and drunkards and revilers and extortioners. It says, these people shall not inherit the kingdom of God. People that do these things. Second Peter 2.15 That's Balaam. I told you about that one. Because, let me go back to it. He loved the way of unrighteousness. He was one that forsook the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Love the wages of unrighteousness. He sold his marvelous gift for gain and defiled the children of Israel, led them into a bondage. Jude 1.11. I wasn't going to do all of this, but Woe unto them, for they are gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perish in the game chain of court. These, these are people that, that uh, are like they described here, Sodom, the, they're filthy dreamers. They defile the flesh and despise dominion. They don't want to be told to obey. They speak evil of dignities. But the Lord gave us Sodom and Gomorrah to be an example. Look at this. Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange lists, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What kind of an example? to us that we don't do the same thing. I, I know uh, that I apologize for rambling here today, but this is so critical to cover so much, so much of the scripture. But in fact, it all agrees with itself. The scripture doesn't defy itself, but you must run it in context. These are people that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof and it tells us to turn away from these kind of teachers. The scripture tells us also that Satan can transform himself into an angel of light and so it's no, it's no mystery that his ministry can do the same thing. They can look very good. It doesn't matter that they're charismatic. 
What matters is they're teaching false doctrine. It doesn't matter that they've got degrees to hang on the wall and they've got all this influential power behind them. What matters is that they're teaching false teaching. They're mixing the word of God with, with the Plato. They're mixing the word of God with Greek gods. With evolution and every other God, ungodly thing today. Jeremiah 5, 21-23. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea for by a perpetual decree, decree that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, you can, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. Look at how the Lord made this, this beautiful world as, as an example of his tremendous power. And we think that we're going to Thumb our nose at his word. We think that he's, he doesn't mean what he says. We think that he can't preserve his word. Of course he can. The Lord can do anything but fail. Ezekiel 13.3 Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the desert. The Lord knows how to turn. Matthew 7, 26 and 27. Everyone that heareth these saying, the mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. What did he say? Every man that hears these sayings of Christ and doeth them not, shall be like a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. That's what the Lord said about anybody that will not follow the word of God. I must go on on this, so I'm going to take you to. Second Peter chapter two. The verse here that we have got our title of this message from. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. That's a fact. And that's happening. That's true today. It's happening today. And through covetousness, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, who judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. It may look like nothing's being done, but the Lord keeps good books. Anybody that changes the word of God, anybody that pilfers with the word of God, is destined for destruction, eternal damnation. They're doing that today with making merchandise of us, 
with feigned words, the changing words. And with these feigned words, they're deceiving. Verse 4, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them to chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overflow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. An example of those that should live ungodly afterwards. That's what Sodom and Gomorrah are for in the word of God as an example to those who think they can live an ungodly life and still go to heaven. I'm sorry, that's not true. You will be destroyed. He delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. I'm going to ask you something. Uh, this is not a judgmental thing. It's not a trick question or anything like that at all. But I'm saying to you, I submit to you that we need to be vexed with the evils that, that are going on today and, and and so 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 moved by these things that we do something about them. If it's no more than prayer and speak the word. Prayer and speak the word. And don't be silent. Speak the word. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Say, praise the Lord. But look what he says about those that will be destroyed. Chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. That's talking about those that believe in once saved, always saved as well as all those disobedient people. Because they walk in the flesh and they despise government. They don't want to be told that they have to live a disciplined life. They're presumptuous. They're self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, Bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. This is serious stuff. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. They're not going into on the glory. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. That's the serious part of it. If a person chooses by himself to go the way of the world, that's his choice. But beguiling unstable souls is a concern of the Lord, and it should be of ours too. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way. That's what Balaam did. It says so right here. And have gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, 
They are learned through the lesson of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that are clean escape from them who live in here. That's showing right there. The children of Israel over there in the Jordan Valley being lured by the flesh. Balaam instituted that instead of starkly standing against it. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Notice how they're delivered. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not some false doctrine, but the word of God that says, you're a new creature in Christ, now walk like it. I've given you a new life. You're a new creature. You have the power of the word of God. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Now walk like it. Put the old man off and put on the new man and walk in the power of the faith of the word of God. For it has been better for them had they not known Known, not accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior as the only answer for life. It's to know what they're doing. It's to know what the Word says. It's to know what life is all about. And it's in the Word of God. No else. It can't be found anywhere else. If it is, it's man's ideas. This, we're talking about eternity. Psychology is not going to make eternity, except in hell. And hell is going to be thrown in the lake of fire at the end. It would be better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. That's the that's the example, a vivid example, a description, I should say, of those who think that once saved, always saved, and they return into the same practices. They never really come out of them. They just accept forgiveness and go right on with life as usual. Their destiny is destruction, damnation. That's the word of God. Now, great tribulation for those who do not repent. Repentance is necessary. This is a few short verses about the Antichrist. And they're talking about the great tribulation that's going to come on the disobedient. When it's talking about the rapture coming and then the Antichrist, it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now leadeth will let until it be taken out of the way. When the new man is taken out, the new man is the remnant church the true believer in, in the Lord, the one that lives the life. When he is taken out, verse 8 says, then shall that wicked be revealed, meaning the Antichrist, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Notice that terminology. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's the second coming of Christ. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, this is talking about the Antichrist now, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, power signs, and lying wonders, 
with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. I must back up because verse 8 says, then shall the wicked be revealed when the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It's still talking about the Antichrist here. And in verse 9, it carries on. Verse 8 just tells us that the Lord is going to consume him with the spirit of his mouth, which is the word of God, and the brightness of the coming. And then the Antichrist. His coming is after the Satan, not Christ, but Satan, the Antichrist. With lying wonders, powers, and signs, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Deceivableness. Notice the impact of that in them that perish, meaning those that are unsaved, those that do not follow the Lord, those that are disobedient, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might live a righteous life, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Does it tell us how serious it is not to live a, a life according to the word of God? God's going to let you go right ahead and believe a lie. And that's what's happened today to so many. The reason that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's the words of the Lord. He doesn't want anybody that isn't following the truth in his camp. That has pleasure in unrighteousness. That's not his family. Praise God. But we're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brother and beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Praise the Lord. That's showing right there that you that are following the Lord and allowing the sanctification of the Holy Ghost and believing the word of God bring you in to that chosen position of salvation. Oh, glory to God. Open our eyes, Lord, to hear marvelous truth. Now, uh, the Lord says to the faithful, those that are struggling to stay faithful to the Lord in these in these disobedient churches. But unto you, I say, and to the rest in fear of Torah, as many as have not this doctrine, meaning the doctrine here of uh, of the Nicolaitans, I believe it was here. No, no, the Jezebel, the teaching, the false teaching of Jezebel. That Jezebel is a type of the, there's Jezebel in the Old Testament, Ahab's uh, wife who was the daughter of a of a Gentile king, idol worshiper. She had 400 prophets at her command, false prophets. This is a kind of powerful teaching that this church in Theratira was allowing to happen in their church. And the Lord said they must repent or they're going into great tribulation but those of you who are not listening to Jezebel, 
You don't have that doctrine. Look, unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already hold fast to my God. He's saying, I'm not taking you out. You stay there steady. When I come, then you will come with me. Hold fast till I come. Praise the Lord. I want to finish up with this. Hold fast till I come. Revelation 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he shall judge and make war. There's no wondering who this is talking about. It's talking about our faithful high priest, our faithful master, our king who's coming, sitting upon this white horse. He's called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge. It's speaking of the kingship. And he's going to make, make war against all wickedness now. 19th chapter of Revelation. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name was called the Word of God. The angels which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Excuse me, it's not angels, it's armies. So, as you follow the Lord and as you walk with him, you will become one of those who are in the armies of the Lord, who are going in the rapture, or if you go through the tribulation period and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ there and walk in his truth and stand and do not turn back, you will be in the army of the Lord. So when the Lord comes from heaven at the end of the tribulation period, the armies which are in heaven follow him. That's the true church. That's a remnant from every decade, from every age, clothed in white rain, fine linen, meaning the righteousness of God, white and clean. Out of his mouth, the Lord Jesus go with the sharp sword. And with it, he shall smite the nations. That's the word of God. The word of God will destroy the disobedient. He shall rule them with the rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. I pray that Today, the church will develop a healthy fear of this wrath and recognize the need to joyously follow the Lord because of his righteousness and his truth and his benefits are so, are, are so glorious. Why would we turn back to the ways of the world? That the church would rise up and see this and stand against the evil doctrines of Jezebel and the practices of Balaam and the Nicolaitans and recognize 
the need for the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, to come in the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God to destroy the wickedness of this world. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourself together under the supper of the great God. That's speaking of bringing all the buzzards. To <laughs> the bodies of those that will be destroyed when Christ speaks at the end of the tribulation period. That ye might eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and then sit on them in the flesh of men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their mighty, their armies, the kings, the beast is the false uh, and I, the Antichrist and the kings of the earth that are with him that follow him and their armies they're gathered together to make war against him and set on the horse and against his army that shows that they're not only against the Lord but against you, the armies of the Lord the Antichrist is against you, the kings of the world are against you, and their armies, those that follow them, those that are unrighteous, those that are not following the ways of God. And the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I pray that this is something that you will take to heart with all of your heart and recognize what God is saying to these churches and to us as an example for us today that we don't get involved in the same thing because our, our, our outcome will be the same as theirs. Destroyed because of disobedience, of failure to follow the Lord, because we didn't love the truth. God help us. Pray with me now as we close. Thank you, Father, for this message. May it be one that will stir us into righteousness, stir us into soberness about salvation, stir us into into the point of being being assured of the call of God to stand against the evils of this hour. Not only the dastardly evils themselves, but the doctrines that tell people they can be involved in these evils and still go to heaven. God, please, make us your voice. Give us a voice. And Glorify yourself and save the lost, that they may walk in righteousness and truth forever and ever with you. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord, I love you. Look forward to the soon coming of our King and Savior, Jesus, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.